after introducing their summer events Rare is back on track with their monthly updates. The Gold Horrors are securing their loot and offer a new voyage type. A new NPC enters the fray and literal sea dogs have been added to the Emporium with this latest update called Vaults of the Ancients. But are these vaults worth exploring or would we rather be sniffing out some other treasure? Let's find out. And as always, I'm a bit later with these updates, but I like to play the game first and mix in my review with some of my own gameplay. So if you like that, please consider subscribing. So let's begin with discussing these new voyages. The gold holders have secured their loot in the ancient vaults and task you to find the vault keys and bring them back. Obviously, you can buy these new voyages, called Wayfinder Voyages, from the Gold Hoarders. Upon voting, you will get a Wayfinder Compass that is equipped using your quest radial. Simply go to whatever location the compass is pointing to dig up some bottles that each contain a piece of a map. If your compass is spinning wildly in all directions, you are at the right spot. Keep in mind that multiple bottles can be buried on the same island, and be aware as you might encounter some weird looking skeletons that may drop some trinkets on the feet. After collecting enough map pieces, you should be able to pinpoint the island where the vault key is buried. Important to know is that you don't need to complete the map. If you recognize the island and happen to collect a piece where the X marks the spot is showing, you can skip a part of this voyage. I think this is great. It rewards all the players that know the seas without giving them a PvP advantage. Figuring this out for yourself is way more rewarding than collecting all the pieces. Keep in mind that as soon as you dig the vault key slash totem, your compass will disappear and you won't be able to dig the other map pieces. But there is no real point in wanting to do that, so it really doesn't matter. Once you've got the totem, you can return it to the gold horrors for a nice reward. Or you can choose the more fun option and steal all the gold for yourself. The vault key bears the name of the island where the vault is and if you still have trouble finding it, you can read an extra hint by interacting with it without actually holding it. Once you enter the vault, the fun stuff begins. I haven't timed it yet, but I think you have about 3 minutes to get everything outside the vault before you are locked inside and eventually drown. Keep in mind, you don't need to bring all the treasure all the way out. Just outside the vault is fine, you can collect it later. However, if you leave the island or sink and return later, the outer vault door will likely be closed, so be careful. And if you are somewhat efficient and at least duo slooping, you should be able to get everything out of the vault, including the gold piles, just in time. It's not just treasure you can collect in the vault, there are also three medallions to be found. Once placed in the stone slate, it will show you three parts of the solution to open the hidden door. The fourth part of the solution is just a guess, but you have as many tries as you want. Once the hidden door is open, you can collect the chest of the ancients, which is just a high value chest. It looks fancy, but it is not that special. When I turned in mine, they had value of around 3500 gold, which is about the same as when you turn in just a totem. Which may seem low, but once you consider this is just a voyage and not a world event, I think it's a pretty decent reward. And if you like completing accommodations like I do, make sure to check the new ones out under your gold horror pane. For completing two of those, you can also unlock some new sales. As a whole, I really like these vaults. A part of your crew will focus on getting the treasure outside, while another part will focus on finding the medallions and the solution to the hidden door. This type of teamwork is great and is one of the reasons why I like this game so much. Yay. This voyage will hopefully also bring out some more PvP opportunities. You can sneak on ships and wait till they open their vault, or attack them when they are solving their puzzle and are blissfully unaware of your presence. And of course, a ship heavy with treasure is just waiting to get sunk. This update also brings a new NPC to the outpost. She is called Larina and is basically the leader of the Bilge Rats. She is replacing the role of Duke, but aside from some interesting dialogue options, she doesn't have a big role to play. Yet. I'm sure the developers are setting up a story with this introduction. 
She does sell some new rose and inky kraken cosmetics, so check them out if you want them. And she also sells a free Golden Wayfinder Voyage of unknown value should you want to pick it up. And fun fact, her presence could already be found on the seas. There is a little stall built out of a rowboat on Sanctuary Outpost. And yes, this stall was built by Larina when she just arrived on the Sea of Thieves. How do I know this? Well, I read her backstory in the Athena's Fortune novel. I'm sure we will discuss her backstory on our podcast eventually. And for those wondering where Duke is, well, he can be found chilling together with Umbra on the Lagoon of Whispers. But when you talk to him, it's like he's trying to recover from a grog addiction. So yeah, just chuck a few cold ones in front of him to show him what he's missing. So, with the main addition out of the way, let's have a look at the new stuff in Emporium. And let's start with dogs. Dogs. What? Yeah, dogs. Dogs. You like dogs. Ah, uh, dogs. They come in three different breeds and with a bunch of outfits. Unlike the other pets, you cannot place them in the same spots, but they have different spots, like guarding the barrel of grog. Very important. There is, however, one aspect of the dogs I don't like. But overall, I like the new pets, but if I'm honest, I'm sticking to my cute little kitty cat for a little while longer. They also completed the Shrouded Ghost ship set, and you can get your missing pieces for a time-limited discount if you go to the ship's pain. This may seem nice, but I don't agree with this practice of making players pay to complete their ship sets. I feel there are better ways to handle this. We also have new costumes themed after Shrouded Ghost. You get two for the price of one, but the second one just adds a white paint to your skin. Still, they look nice. They glow in the dark and they feature some amazing detail like double pack legs. But you know, they are still overpriced as shit. But we are not done with this mech yet, since you can also pick up the Shrouded Ghost blunderbuss. Just this weapon for now, but I'm sure Rare will complete the set eventually. But, you know, you never know with them. We also have a new Hunter's Call emote bundle. The two emotes with a dagger look pretty cool. We also have a Salt Sprinkling emote, which I'm sure will be used in many PvP situations. And we have the blow uh, I mean the Tracking emote as well. And the free emote this month is a Dog Dance emote, so be sure to pick that one up. And of course, we can't forget about some of the quality of life additions this update also brings. And this month we have some truly wonderful ones. And let's begin with the one I'm pleased by the most. And that is the Slimline Island banners. These new banners will not obscure your health and bullet interface anymore, and if you want you can toggle them off completely. I also like that they give this option for both Adventure and Arena separately. I myself will probably turn them off completely for the latter. If you want to do so, you can find this option under gameplay when you go to your settings. And when turning in your treasure, you will now also see your emissary value go up in the bottom left corner, which is also nice. So, is this update a good one? Yes it is, raiding treasure vaults is something I consider to be part of the pirate fantasy and I am glad we are finally able to do so. Unlike a certain tall tale, these vaults are all about the treasure and all about the gold. These new voyages are easily the most fun gold hoarder missions and a great way to reuse those old vaults. It does make me wonder if the merchant alliance ever will get a fun voyage as well, but we have to wait and see. And of course, a lot of pirates are happy with the inclusion of dogs, which I do like, but wake me up when they include either a baby hippo or a baby kraken in the Emporium. The addition of Larina is interesting to say the least, and there is actually some lore to discuss as well. But I will save that for our podcast, which will be releasing a bit later this week. Check it out if you like to hear me and other YouTubers talk even more about this game. So, thanks for watching my video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And let me know what you guys make of this update or what you would like to see for the next one. I myself am craving for a new tall tale, it has been a while. But what about you? What would you like to see? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, I always read all of them. 
So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Cozy, where trying is he? To. I'm trying to. I'm, oh, I'm he's, alive. He's a he's naughty designer. He's downstairs. You can go up. He's a he's so naughty. <laughs> All right, Cozy, get away, get away, Cozy. Oh well. Oh, he came over. He's right behind you. Uh, in the water <laughs> behind you. He's a naughty designer. <laughs>